Uh, in this video, I would like to explain how um, running uh, uh, local applications that are available online uh, using ngrok. And this is specifically uh, uh, useful for ML applications because typically ML applications require significant amount of memory to, to run like OCR service, for example. And uh, it would cost you uh, some amount of money to uh, buy cloud service with uh, 24 gigabytes of RAM or 32 gig gigabytes of RAM. And if you have already a spare computer, you could just deploy uh, those applications on that computer and expose the applications through the NGROC service to the outside. And the good thing uh, about NGROC is that uh, you get HTTPS uh, for your endpoint and with automatic renewal also you could set up uh, content compression and, and so on. And it's quite easy, uh, as soon as you create the endpoint you get a command that you can copy paste to the command prompt on your machine where application is running and you just need to change the port number to the port uh, on which application runs and start this command to uh, open it. Uh, tunnel communication from your application to the NGROC service uh, to create the NGROC endpoint. And in this case, uh, uh, when a client will be accessing uh, the URL, then all, all the traffic will be redirected through the NGROC to your application and the response will be sent back to the, to the client. Right, so you have the endpoints, so as many applications you want to expose, you have as many endpoints and NGROC quite easily allows to uh, map custom domains with the endpoints. So I have, for example, two domains uh, as a subdomains in this case, and I map them with the uh, NGROC endpoints and uh, uh, this allows uh, users to access your application for this nice uh, URL. Uh, like in this case, it's Power Receipt Assistant UI. Uh, it's a subdomain under Red right Consulting, so I can refer to the application. And now this application is protected with HTTPS, and uh, it runs on my local computer for the NGROC service. Right, and if I go to uh, to that computer where applications are running uh, through the screen sharing, I could uh, check uh, Docker containers. Like uh, at, at this moment, there are three containers running on that machine, uh, plugin UI and plugin. So those those first two containers are exposed through the NGROC, and Sparrow Data is the container responsible for data extraction from the document, uh, data uh, storage in an external MongoDB, and so on. And for example, Sparrow Data uh, to run this container, um, it would require quite a lot of RAM, like because uh, it runs on uh, using Paddle OCR to, for the data extraction from the documents and it needs like 16 or maybe 12, 20 gigabytes of RAM and to buy uh, this amount of RAM from the cloud is quite expensive but uh, uh, on your local you get it for free. And of course you need to pay uh, for the NGROC monthly fee like um, $20, for example, or, or uh, around that. Depends on uh, how many uh, custom domains you want to have, but it's still uncomparable cheaper com instead of uh, buying um, cloud storage to run your ML application. And this is, and Grok is especially useful if your uh, application is um, in early stages and uh, you don't want to spend lots of money to host it on cloud and you just want to give it to the couple of users uh, to explore so then you can deploy it nicely from your uh, local environment from the uh, separate local computer and uh, for the custom domain you can provide uh, n nice access to those to the, to the users. So now uh, if I would like to go and uh, uh, try to upload the file here, I browse the files, uh, select the file and if I hit upload, the, just let me go to the Sparrow data uh, log over here, clean up the log and if I hit upload then I see that uh, the call from the outside was made to the uh, through the Sparrow plugin UI service was made to the Sparrow data service we here data was extracted and stored in, in the database and as a confirmation we got the key uh, unique key for this data entry and I could go to the MongoDB dashboard here I have two entries now if I uh, refresh, uh, then 
uh, yeah, I got two entries as well because the uh, the previous one was expired. Uh, and if I check by key, so it's A for M. So that's the one. That's this one is inserted uh, at the moment to database, and this logic in the database defined like after 15 minutes, if this data entry was not used by ChatGPT plugin, then it's automatically removed. So that's why you, you saw two entries uh, at the start, and after the I refreshed the dashboard, you also got two entries. It's just because I it happened that I didn't refresh the dashboard for some time after the testing the application um, previously. Okay, so thanks for watching and my point is that uh, if you have a ML application that you want to share with the other users, uh, it's not necessary to buy expensive cloud instance, you could host it from your uh, computer, maybe you have like a spare computer, like in my case where you can deploy the application and expose it through the NROC with custom domain mapping, HTTPS and content compression. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.